everybody, it's your old pal Ron Howard from Extreme Sequences, and welcome to Effects Lights 101, where I impart some of my knowledge about effects and models. So this is episode one, Arches. I hope you're ready. There are numerous effects that can be used on arches. One of my favorites especially when I'm trying to get something to work with timings, would be the VU meter along with this timing events alternate time sweep to, and you'll see here new timing, that is this timing track. So I've just created some basic timings, subdivided these into really fast movements here at the end. And if we look at this, we can see that the section when it starts, it bounces back, and then it's gonna bounce in half time, and then back and forth, eighth notes, 12, 24, and there we go. So that's a pretty easy thing to set up, especially if you have timings in your sequence. This is a great tool to get them to evenly bounce back and forth. And now granted, this particular effect does not have a blur or a 3D on it. So I learned this from Dan Culp last year uh, because I was talking about this. Gosh, I wish they would add this. He goes, well, if you just put a black or an off effect before it, it'll give you that nice little leading trail that you see here. See that little tail there or the ending tail? And that looks really sweet. All right, let's go to another effect. This one happens to be the pinwheel. The pinwheel can be a really, really cool effect and easy to use on the arches. Uh, keep in mind, because this is at the group level, I am typically employing different things like overlay center or perhaps per model per preview. If I change that to overlay center, probably looks not so good. So this is one of these things where we get into these discussions about native models versus custom models. And in this case here, I would call these arches a little more uh, native. So going with per model per preview gives me a much more pleasant effect. And of course we can change the thickness of this at will and we can employ the 3D on here, thicken this up just a little bit and that looks pretty cool liking it. Let's go to another one of my favorite effects. This happens to be the wave effect. And I use this quite a bit in my sequences. I just love the arbitrary movement. Uh, they can be in sync with time if you mess with the speed control here. But I really just love having something like this and, and maybe even putting an effect underneath it with some separation to create that contrast. Uh, I also can simply take the same effect and mirror it and suddenly I've got them doing jumping jacks. This looks like something you might see from the single strand tool going uh, with a uh, bounce from middle. And the, uh, But the difference is these are all sort of taking time and I love that effect. And that is using horizontal per model per strand. Again, if I change this back to my overlay centered, that doesn't look so good. And if I go to my per model per preview, uh, not so much, not so much, but this happens to work with horizontal. And, and the way you get used to this is simply by practicing and testing between the different render styles at the group level. That's all it really is. There's no magic here, just time, practice, and patience. Let's get to the next one. You know, this is an effect I used to use a lot long ago. This is a neat effect that has some, um, has some neat things you can do with it based on the band size and the skip size and the thickness and of course what your rendering style might be. If I change this to per model, per preview, it sort of just goes the other way and looks thinner. If I change that to overlay centered, that's where we're at. I could go to horizontal, it's gonna bounce toward, sort of in toward each other, but that's not a bad effect. It creates a nice symmetry where they're coming in toward each other and then we can try vertical per model and now they're going outward. So again, this could be a great use, okay? So I'm gonna put it back on overly centered and leave it there. Let's go to our next one, spirals. Who doesn't love spirals? Again, another neat tool. You can change the wraps to get a different look. Use this with a bit of finesse. It doesn't take much. And then you can make it go the other way. You can get some real separation in there 
and sort of put it back the way it was, except going the opposite direction. Cool, right? Uh, the next one. Oh, yes. I mean, you've got to have some morph in your life, right? I'm not a huge morph guy, but it certainly has its place in x lights and could do some great things with it. I do like this effect. I love the way this trails off here at the end with the cool blue color. That is pretty nifty. And then we'll just do one more. Here we go. One of my favorite effects in the world. Uh, so versatile on so many different models. And again, we're still at the group level here. Now, I am using horizontal. If I put it on overlay centered, watch what it does. And that's not a bad effect, but I would want to open up the width more. I'd want to get this to breathe out to the edges. But vertical will do this, and it doesn't do much different. But horizontal, there we go. There's that left to right. That's a really beautiful arch effect right there. And I just, just love it. Okay, so let's let's get into the triple arches. Now, this is a cool exercise for you. You could just click on this, this. You can just select all. If you want, just select all. You can do that. And what we can do is just arrow this up to the triple arches. And we'll take a look at these. That looks as expected. It's going to bounce back and forward all the way through the speeds until the very end. Great. And then we have this. And I kind of dig this. I like using this effect quite a bit. I might put another arm in there, maybe a lot more arms, maybe just four arms, uh, different ways you could play with that. But once you're at the triple arch level, this is where you can really start having fun with these render styles. If I put this on overlay centered, that sort of, it could be, it's an interesting effect. That's not my favorite vertical. Again, just sort of reverses that. Horizontal, not so much. And I think we just come back here to per preview and that probably looks the best. But later when I get into sharing some ideas on intermediate or advanced concepts, we can start looking at uh, things like value curves and moving the X and Y coordinates to get some other type of movements going. If we look at the wave, uh, again, this looks pretty much like the other one did. Uh, you can play around with different settings here to get it to do different things. And this is one of my go-tos for sequencing when I'm trying to create something sort of edgy for a Halloween sequence. It looks like gears turning. Uh, typically, I'll go in here and look at mirrored wave. I'm like, okay, that's pretty cool. I might go to my triangle, take off the mirror wave, and just start playing around with different things. See. This, I love. This is just so cool. Love it, love it, love it. All right, let's go on to uh, Single Strand. Uh, again, one of the strongest tools in x Lights is this effect right here. It can just do so many things. So again, play with these different styles. See what you can get it to do. Uh, vertical. And then we can go to our Relay Centered. Same thing. Go to our per model per preview and suddenly that's completely different. I do kind of like that. It looks like weird eyelashes or something. It's not a bad effect. Uh, let's go to the marquee. The marquee, uh, you can get lost playing with the marquee for hours and hours and hours. I'll put this on vertical, not much difference. Horizontal, it just goes the other way. Put it back on overlay centered. Eh. And then we come down here to per model per preview. It's not much different, and it sort of starts breaking up on the bottom, so that's not going to be a great one. If you leave it on Overlay Center and start playing with these band sizes, this is where it gets really interesting. And we can just sort of, sort of start breaking this up and change the thickness and get some different types of shapes in there. Another one of my favorites happens to be the spiral effect on these arches. Uh, it's on horizontal right now. I'll put it on vertical so you can see what that does. Not much difference, but watch what happens when I put it on overlay centered. I love, love, love this effect because watch what happens when I increase the spirals. I'm going to increase them. I'm going to keep going this way until I get this little shape that I'm looking for. Eh, it's pretty close. I can put it on 3D. Uh, much better. Much, much better. And I just dig that. Uh, you can put in more of these and you get really a cool look. It looks like a, I don't know what that looks like. It looks like some type of strange animal from outer space. Uh, but it's really, really neat. And then it takes us over here. Our morph, uh, morph looks kind of funky on there. So I might start trying some other things to see what that does. I, that's not bad going in to out to the rings. We can go with our per model per preview. And that's pretty cool from the bottom up. And of course, here's the infamous beautiful 
shockwave effect. And again, going from vertical, that's a nice sweeping move. I would probably take this uh, radius two a little bit more to get that to resolve at the bottom, maybe put in some uh, sparkles. There we go. That's pretty. And of course, we can also try the per model per preview. Uh, there are a lot more that you can try uh, to see what they do. Uh, we'll get into this stuff when it gets more advanced. But for now, these are some cool things you can do with some basic effects with not too much tweaking and utilizing the render styles. It's just trial and error. If you see something and you love it, you're doing some great sequencing. That's it. I hope this has been helpful for you. If you have any questions, drop me a line. See ya.